Okay, so for our high school choice, um, the process is really interesting and really fun. Um, I say interesting because you get to pick and make so many decisions um, at such a young age and you get to start applying for high schools. Um, you know, it's really rare for uh, students to have the opportunity to uh, apply for high school. So when I say high school choice, I also emphasize my little motto of like, it's your voice. You get to decide where you would like to go to high school and you get to pick five. So on this screen, these are some of the high schools that are part of the high school choice process where you apply to your high school in eighth grade and you it's like college, you kind of figure out where you get accepted. So it's really fun. Um, these are schools that have special programming and these are the schools that are also considered our charters. So if you want to take a look. Muchachos, para que sepan, enfrente de ustedes están viendo una lista de escuelas. Oye, mis Tengo y Miss Chong estarán, estarán hablando de cómo escoger su high school, su escuela después de graduarse. Uh, ahí tienen escuelas uh, eh, de las cuales ustedes pueden escoger. Así que mírenlas, por favor. Alrighty, so I wanted to highlight these four schools. So these schools are considered our entrance criteria schools. And I'm gonna explain that more into the presentation, but I'll give you a quick overview right now. Baltimore City College, Baltimore Polytechnic Institute, Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School and Western High School are considered our entrance criteria school, which means based on your grades, based on your um, standardized testing assessments, and sometimes your attendance, you are given a composite score based on all that data. These are the schools that require that composite score for admission. I also wanna shout out that um, this year for eighth graders, um, we had the most number of girls be accepted to Western. Um, this year we had 15 girls. Um, so that's a really big deal. And we would love to see that trend going. Muchachos, enfrente de ustedes ven cuatro escuelas diferentes. Um, estas escuelas uh, son muy competitivas, son escuelas que eh, definitivamente piden mucho de ustedes, o sea, con el, al respecto de grados, uh, sus calificaciones tienen que estar muy buenas, a uh, su asistencia a la escuela, a uh, este usan un este un un total, verdad, de grados para que puedan ustedes asistir. Mis Pingo estaba hablando sobre la escuela uh, Western, que es la escuela de mujeres, a uh, donde han aceptado a varias de nuestras estudiantes de Lakeland, como 15, creo. Okay, so explain composite scoring. You may have heard, you may have not heard, so we're gonna do a review regardless. So like I said before, those four schools that we just shared, Poly, Dunbar, City, and Western require composite scores. So the count, so the breakdown is your seventh grade final grades, your eighth grade first quarter grades, so quarter one, and then testing. This year they did not include attendance and over the years they don't, but they do look at it closely, part of the admissions process. I've heard from different schools that even though the composite score is required or not required for some schools, they are still looking at attendance. Um, Mr. Garcia, if you want to translate that because the next uh, chunk is going to be a lot. Uh, so, este, las escuelas que vieron hace rato hacen las, uh, unas puntuaciones compuestas basado en sus grados. Este año creo no están haciendo atendencia, uh, pero sí hay este calificaciones que eh, ven, o sea, las últimas calificaciones del séptimo grado y creo las primeras del octavo grado son muy importantes. Por eso es que es importantísimo que tengan buenas notas. All right, so I wanted to highlight the seventh grade final grades. I think a lot of students, um, I've been part of the high school choice process for now two or three years. And I think this is something that uh, seventh grade needs to know. When it says seventh grade final grades, we're not talking about just the last quarter. A lot of students that I've worked with in the past have been like, oh, Ms. Chong, my grades only count for that last quarter. Uh, incorrect. 
the seventh grade final grades. So if you look to the left of my screen, that includes quarter one, two, three, and four, all of seventh grade. So um, a lot of friends are like, oh, but I'm applying to high schools in eighth grade. Right, so since we're applying to high schools in eighth grade, our grades that are part of the composite score is your seventh grade final grades. Entonces, um, los grados, muchos estudiantes se equivocan cuando piensan que eh, solo cuentan los grados del último trimestre. Eso es mentira, eso no funciona así. Todos los trimestres, uno, dos, tres y cuatro, cuentan como su, su calificación final para el séptimo grado. Por eso que el séptimo grado es un grado bien importante. Así para que tengan claro de que es todos los trimestres, no solo el de ahora o el que viene o el primero, nada. Tienen que ser todos. Ms. Chong, can I also add something in about composite scores? Absolutely. Um, so also keeping in mind that for a school like City or like Poly, um, their composite scores rely heavily on math and ELA. And so not that social studies or science do not matter, they most certainly do and are still part of your composite scores, but they calculate ELA and math differently. And so City has a heavy emphasis on ELA and Poly has a heavy emphasis on math. Entonces, uh, las escuelas como Poly y City, uh, este, sus calificaciones compuestas uh, se, se enfocan más en matemáticas y en inglés y LA. Um, eh, por ejemplo, City, creo, su es, me tengo, dice que se, se enfocan eh, que sus grados de ELA sean muy fuertes, sean bastante buenos y que y Poly se enfoca mucho en los este, grados de matemáticas. No es que social studies ni ciencias no importen, pero ELA y matemáticas son los eh, son las materias más importantes. The next part of the composite score I want to highlight, <clears throat> excuse me, is your testing. So as I said before in the beginning of this uh, presentation, yes, standardized testing. Uh, Count, has counted in the previous years, but this year, uh, due to COVID, that we were not being we were not being penalized for using scores from the past or even currently in eighth grade. So what the city did was they awarded students a hundred points for English and a hundred points for math. Because typically, the testing composite score for testing is that they would take your standardized testing from. Last year, typically you've used iReady, they have used other assessments and that's how it'd be calculated. For this year, due to COVID, they were awarded 100 points for English and 100 points for math. So what I said on the right side of my slide is, I'm gonna just read it straight off. The testing calculation could change when you are in eighth grade. So even though we are virtual right now, please take your assessments and testing seriously because they might count next year. Again, I can't say they are going to count, they're not going to count, but your assessments for this year in seventh grade, please take them seriously and just try your absolute best. And that, is, oh, sorry, Mr. Dorsey actually translate first and then I'll hop in. Okay, thank you. Um, exámenes, pruebas estandarizadas, um, son muy importantes en cuanto a sus puntajes, ¿verdad? El puntaje compuesto que estamos mencionando. Este año, a causa de, de la pandemia, eh, el distrito ha otorgado 100 puntos para inglés y 100 puntos para matemáticas. Si miran bien, el cálculo de las pruebas podría cambiar cuando estén en octavo grado. Así que, por favor, Ms. Chong expresa que es bien importante que tomen en serio todos sus exámenes y que hagan su mejor esfuerzo. This also includes doing or taking iReady very seriously because at the beginning of this school year, um, we found out that iReady was going to be part of the composite score. Now the city did end up changing their mind, but that is how easily it, <clears throat> it can change in a very short period of time. So it's important that you're taking both iReady seriously and then 
even though our state testing is canceled for this year, we don't know how it's going to look next year and if we're going to be taking it in the fall. And so if that's the case, we still need to be prepared. So it's very, very important that you're taking both of these assessments seriously, like Ms. Chong said. Um, I ready, I ready. Eh, Ms. Pingo les pide que también lo tomen bien en serio, inglés y ELA, porque este año este es I ready está contando para este puntaje compuesto. Um, todo está cambiando, todo, todo puede cambiar, pero uh, por eso es que les expresan sus maestros que es bien importante de que este, hagan el mejor esfuerzo, uh, que, que trabajen duro en iReady y obvio en sus exámenes. Alrighty, so uh, a more information about composite score. The required composite score to apply to those four schools, Poly, Western, Dunbar, and um, City, you need a minimum, minimum, so at least a composite score is 610. A lot of students were confused about this process in the previous years and this year. Many students share that, oh, Ms. Chong, I'm over 610, or I had at least a 610. Okay, we just want to emphasize that amazing, awesome, you worked so hard, we're really proud of you, but obtaining that score of a 610 does not guarantee a placement, okay? And I'm going to uh, explain the scores below, okay? So due to COVID, the new calculation for composite scores, this was each school's composite score cutoff which means these are the scores that are the lowest scores that they accepted for acceptance for next school year for high school. Poly was a 773, City was a 747, Dunbar, I'm going to say 702, 703, and Western was a 700. Así que enfrente ustedes ven el, el puntaje compuesto requerido, ¿verdad? Eh, que es de 610, pero eso no te garantiza un puesto en ninguna de estas escuelas que, que presentamos hace rato, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, Poli tiene un puntaje de 773, so para poder ir a esa escuela tienes que tener ese puntaje. Para Siri son 747, Dunbar 7.2 o 7.3 y Western tiene 700 uh, puntos compuestos, así que Miren bien los números, hagan la matemática y piensen bien las cosas. I also want to add in that just so that you guys can kind of think about what type of grades you would have to have in order to obtain these composite scores, even though we've talked about composite scores, it's hard to wrap your head around. But I do want you guys to know that like, so for example, poly 773, that's pretty much straight A's. Whereas for Western, a 700, you're looking at mostly A's, but B's as well. And so there's a range of grades for all of these, um, these schools that require entrance criteria, composite scores. So, entonces, uh, cada escuela tiene diferentes variedades, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, Poly, 773 puntos. Eso quiere decir que tus calificaciones tienen que ser puras A's, A's, A's. A uh, Don Barg, eh, eh, Miss Pingo explica que pues es un estudiante de A's y B's, ¿verdad? So, entonces, es, varía bastante eh, la, el puntaje debido a tus calificaciones. All righty. Uh, this will just be a quick screenshot. Um, and this can be these images that I'm going to show you are part of the high school choice guide. And I will show you that further in the presentation. But we are in the southwest part of Baltimore. So when you are considering applying for high schools next year, you want to keep in mind your distance and how you're going to get to school. So again, some of the schools that are um, part of the choice process, they are in the Northwest part, Northeast, and a lot, actually a good chunk are right in our neighborhood in Lakeland, and then also in the Southeast part of Baltimore. So dependiendo de las escuelas que ustedes decían eh, escoger, verdad? Por ejemplo, las que mencionamos hace rato, 
Um, se encuentran más en el noroeste y en el noreste del, del, de la ciudad. Más, uh, o sea que tienes que pensar cómo vas a llegar ahí, qué, identificar qué transporte, etc. Y también hay otras escuelas que están más cercanas a nuestra área, que estamos en el sureste, suroeste y en el sureste de la ciudad. All the numbers in black and white listed are all the different high schools that are part of the high school choice process. And those numbers are explained in the high school choice guide, which we'll, we'll briefly review. Los puntos, los números negros, blancos, eh, este, son los números de las escuelas que, están, eh, que participan en el, en el high school choice para escoger tu high school. Um, y todos esos, nom no, esos nombres van a estar en la aplicación. Um, when Ms. Chong and I sat down with our um, students, our eighth graders this year to have their um, application appointments, one of the big conversations that we had focused on geography. So we definitely want to make sure that we're setting you up for success um, with the schools that you choose based on their distance. Um, remember that high schools don't offer um, transportation, and so it is your responsibility to get there. Um, many students end up relying on public transportation, Um, and some also have their parents drive them, but it's really, really important that you think about locations of schools when you're trying to pick them um, so that you can get there every day um, and attendance does not become an issue for you. Uh, escoger una high school is muy importante, verdad, por el hecho de que tienes de que ver uh, el tipo de transportación que vas a necesitar para llegar a, ese, a esa escuela. Uh, muchas escuelas no ofrecen transporte, pero muchos estudiantes escogen el transporte público o tienen padres que los llevan a, este, a la escuela. Pero es importante de que tomen eso en mente, eh, eh, mantengan eso en mente de que la escuela que escojan les va, este, necesitan saber qué tipo de transportación necesitan para llegar a, a... La idea es que siempre asistan a la escuela, que no se les haga difícil transportarse y llegar a ella. Uh, Ms. Pingle, do you want to explain um, the helpful links? Um, I will drop in the chat those three links. So the three links above is the High School Choice website, and um, the High School Choice Guide is available in English and Spanish. Um, so here are some of the links um, that we use to help students prepare for their high school choices. Um, so the High School Choice website, um, it gives some information about the High School Choice process, um, as well as everything that you need in order to prepare yourself for this journey towards high school. Whereas the choice guides um, will help tell you a little bit more about each of the high schools, their locations, what they offer, um, and criteria needed in order to um, be admitted to those schools at their entrance criteria or some of the things that these schools are focusing on or look for in their students. Well, la guía de este verdad para escoger su escuela este está en español también por si les preocupaba eso. Eh, en ella vas a encontrar toda la información necesaria para la escuela, o sea, qué programas ofrecen, este qué lejos está. Uh, etcétera, ¿verdad? So, entonces, uh, este proceso de, de aplicar para high school ya está empezando. Es como que sí están en el séptimo grado, pero ustedes ya tienen que saber la información que necesitan para su próximo high school. Alrighty, so the application process, this is how it works. Um, applications are submitted online by me. There is a portal that counselors use. You chat with me about the five high schools you're interested in. It is highly recommended that you have at least five schools uh, that you would like to apply to. Even if um, you are moving, If your parents, for some reason, um, wants you to do a different application, if you have different plans, I do want to highlight this. 
if you do not submit an application, if you do not let Ms. Chong or Ms. Pingle, if she's joining my team next year again for high school choice, the district will place you at a high school of their choice. So the way it works is that after the first round of applications are over, students are getting acceptances. Oh no, Ms. Chong, I never submitted an application. Oh, Ms. Chong, I didn't submit an application. So what's gonna happen is whatever schools are left over with available seats for you for next year, that district will place you. So if you do not submit an application, the district will determine your school for you. Eh, en la aplicación tienen la oportunidad de poner cinco high schools. Eh, es, es recomendable cinco, cinco secundarias uh, para que tengan la oportunidad de escoger, ¿verdad? Obvio, solo una es la que los va a aceptar, tal vez dos, tres, dependiendo a uh, su, sus calificaciones. Uh, es muy importante que este proceso sea completado con Miss Chong o Miss Pingo, que están, son parte del equipo de este high school choice ellas les van a ayudar con este proceso pero se tienen que sentar con ellas y llenar esta aplicación uh, porque si no la llenan va los la, el distrito donde estén este, sea porque sea la razón que se haya movido o lo que sea si ustedes no entregaron esta aplicación el distrito los va a poner en la escuela a uh, que tenga espacio disponible para ustedes. O sea, va a ser tal vez una escuela que no ni siquiera van a querer ir, pero les va a tocar porque ustedes no llenaron la aplicación. I do also want to clarify that this, um, this process of the district placing you at a high school will not be at an entrance criteria school. Um, it is not an option because there won't be any seats open. So like Ms. Chalk had said, it's going to be only at a school where they have available seats. Um, and so those, um, those um, schools are just not gonna be an option, unfortunately. Um, and then another thing that I did wanna talk to you guys about, perfect example of, of a student who did not give us multiple schools to apply to, um, he only gave us one and unfortunately he was not accepted. So now we are going through round two with him um, and helping him um, apply to and get into another school. That's why it's really, really important that we put in these applications and we include multiple options for all of you so that you have the opportunity to get into a school um, your very first time around. Tienen la oportunidad de entrar a una buena high school, de escoger su escuela, su secundaria. Uh, mi Pingo está contando el, el ejemplo de un estudiante que solamente llenó en su aplicación una sola escuela y lamentablemente a esa escuela no lo aceptaron. Déjenmelo. No lo aceptaron y este, ahora están en el proceso de ayudarle a que puedas entrar a una escuela que la desea, ¿verdad? Pero este... Por eso que es muy importante y sus maestras eh, enfatizan de que tienen que llenar esa aplicación. Alrighty, so for the timeline, so I saw a lot of, I saw a friend ask, you know, when are these applications due? So this is how the breakdown is. Your final composite scores are released. So, uh, with you in eighth grade, we'll teach you how to access that. So composite scores are released roughly around winter break. So end of December, the application window opens after winter break. So that first week of January, and then your lovely teach, your lovely staff members, Ms. Pingle and myself, will be constantly reminding you that applications are due roughly around the end of January. Do not do not get, do not worry, do not start getting anxious. We will be reminding you to ensure that, you know, again, your choice, your voice is heard. And then acceptances are announced around the end of February, beginning of March. Some of our students actually found out about these acceptances before Ms. Bingle and I even did. So um, you'll find out um, through your Infinite Campus portal or uh, through us. And sometimes I've had schools reach out to me and being like, all right, Lakeland, this is your list of students who have got seats and these are your acceptances. So, entonces, uh, los resultados se estará, estarán, se les, se les darán sus resultados finales, ¿verdad? Uh, en diciembre, ¿verdad? Durante el invierno. 
eh, la apertura de la, de, la, de la solicitud de la aplicación será en enero, a, este, a finales de enero, más o menos, y este, estarán aceptándoles, uh, se les anunciará, ¿verdad? Cuando lo hayan sido aceptados a finales de febrero, principios de marzo. Algunos estudiantes se enteran primero que los maestros, pero Miss Chong uh, y Miss Pingo serán las que les estén recordando sobre la aplicación y también, um, yes. All right, and our last couple of slides that we want you to start thinking about and things to remember again, if you do not submit, I think the big thing is if you do not submit an application, the district will decide a school for you. And obviously we do, I personally, I do not want that to happen to any of you. Um, big thing to consider when applying to um, high schools next year is location. Charter schools, Green Street Academy, Coffin Academy, I'm thinking about, um, BARD has a different application process. You'll start learning about these schools. Special programming schools like charter schools or art schools, they have different deadlines and application processes. So if you are interested, you gotta let us know as soon as possible. We have seen this a lot with eighth grade. They'll share, you know, you know, randomly throughout the year being like, oh, I'm interested in this one school. If they're not part of the choice to application process and the deadline passed, unfortunately, you cannot apply. So just keep in mind, if you are interested in other schools that are not part of the choice application process, please let us know so we can start that process for you and ensure that you have applied before the deadline. Las cosas, las, um, las escuelas uh, autónomas, por ejemplo, escuelas de arte, Uh, tienen una fecha de solicitud diferente, un plazo diferente. Uh, tal vez estas escuelas no estén en las opciones de la guía para escoger tu high school. So, si te interesa ir a una de estas escuelas, es, es importante que hables con Miss Chong o Miss Pingo para que ellas te puedan ayudar con ese proceso de aplicar para esas escuelas. Uh, factores que incluyen la aplicación, obvio, son este, las actividades extracurriculares, extra um, la distancia, tu calificación um, de ingreso y este, planificación académica y profesión. Um, yes, thank you. Alrighty, and the last thing we want to emphasize, if you are moving, so again, I'll, this was This was a lot of cases uh, this school year with some eighth graders. Oh, I think I'm moving. Oh, my mom says we're moving like next year. Regardless, if it's an if, if it's a definite, you are moving, if you're moving, what have you, we are still recommending that each student still completes and submit a high school choice application unless your parent or guardian's like, mm, they give us the no and give, the, give us their consent to nix the high school choice application. But if you are moving and you're still near the Baltimore city area um, and you just moved out of the city district because we do have like that zone, um, your parent or guardian um, will need to speak to the finance office over in Baltimore city public schools district office um, so you can pay school tuition to attend our schools. Uh, uno de los problemas que tuvieron con los muchachos del octavo grado fue que muchos decían, oh, mi papá, mamá se va a mudar, nos vamos a mudar, tal vez sí, tal vez no. Uh, no importa que eso esté sucediendo en tu caso, eh, las maestras recomiendan de que llenes tu aplicación uh, para que no te quedes uh, sin hacer ese proceso. Uh, en caso de que tu padre o tu madre decida no, este, a uh, uh, a llenar esa solicitud, uh, de, tienen que hablar con los maestros, tener un permiso de ellos para ignorar esta aplicación. Uh, este, ahí tenemos, estamos divididos entre el condado y entre la ciudad. Entonces, este, si pueden ver, uh, para asistir a una escuela secundaria pública de Baltimore o si ha mandado fuera del distrito, el padre tiene que eh, hablar con la oficina de finanzas para pagar la matrícula escolar.
I also want to add in, um, since we're talking about um, the district and making sure that we are, um, you know, living in the district if we want to go to district schools. I know that Lansdowne is very, very close to Lakeland and is sometimes a school that a lot of students would like to go to. Unfortunately, Lansdowne is not a city school. And so it is not part of the high school choice process and it is a county school. So if that is a school you're interested in, technically you need to be living in the county and you need to be contacting um, Lansdowne and Baltimore County schools directly in order to even um, explore if that is an option for you. Lansdowne es una de las escuelas que está literalmente a la vuelta de la esquina con la ciudad. Muchos de ustedes tal vez quisieran ir a esa escuela, pero Lansdowne no es parte de la aplicación, no, es ninguna, no está en las opciones porque es parte del condado. En este caso tendrías que vivir en el condado y comunicarte con la escuela Lansdowne para poder empezar el proceso de, de inscripción. I know that was a lot of information. And if you are feeling anxious, if you're feeling excited, whatever you're feeling, it is welcome. It is okay. Um, you know, y'all gonna be in eighth grade, your last year at Lakeland, it's exciting, you're sad, you're, you know, excited, happy, what have you. So if you have any questions about this process, anything about high school, anything about the application of the process, please reach out, reach out to us. Our contact information is listed. Um, Y'all already probably know my number by heart because I always give it to you guys like at least twice or three times a month. So please feel free to reach out to me um, or please reach out to Ms. Pingle as well. Ahí está la información de Miss Chong y de Miss Pingo. Por favor, tómenle una foto, mantengan esa información de ellos. Su número de Miss Chong está ahí. Para cualquier pregunta que tengan respecto a este proceso de aplicar a High School, muy importante, muchachos, no se queden atrás. No lo hagamos al último minuto. Aprovechen esta oportunidad que sus maestras les están dando. <música> 